back to another episode of Evolving Through Experience where we're discussing everything growth in every aspect, mentally, spiritually, emotionally, physically, and beyond. Today we have a great guest on, another special guest, Level Up Alyssa. I know that's not, she does go by Level Up Alyssa, so yeah. uh, that's what we're going to stick with. How you feeling? <laughs> amazing, amazing. <laughs> I appreciate you for having me on today, man. Nah, for sure. It's a pleasure to have you on. So yeah, I want to jump right into it. You know, like I said, Evolving Through Experience, we're discussing everything growth. Um, and just every aspect. So obviously, we know you deal with a lot of behind the scenes, behind the cameras. But today, that's exactly what we're going to talk about. But when I say behind the scenes, behind the cameras, more of those intangibles that you don't get to always share because obviously you're always behind the scenes working. But those intangibles that make you really who you are today and right. also who you're going to be. Right. So, yeah. So obviously, we I know I met you. I met you obviously through just obviously in the same field. But um, I think the first time I met you was at... Um, at a shoot or whatnot you was doing for my bro, um, the collective or whatnot you was doing for Lawrence and them and everything, right? That was the first time I met you or? Uh, no, we actually met the first time at the office space. Oh, yeah, yeah, yep. Yeah. Okay, yep. Yeah. When I was speaking with your bro. Okay, your brother. You know, it's crazy. I didn't know that was your brother the whole time. Right. Yeah, because when he was t talking to me, he was like, my partner, my partner. And I was like, I never know who his partner was. And he was like, he told me it was you. I was like, oh, that's your sister. I never knew that. So that was crazy <laughs> when I found out. But nah, none nonetheless, um, I want to jump straight into it. Um, I know your story just a little bit. I know, like I said, you did a highlight on your story. And that's when, uh, once I first started following you, obviously everybody do their research as you should. Mm -hmm. um, and I just seen pretty much your story. So let's start there from school. Um, obviously, it start before then. So if you want to start before then, but that's where I know you started sharing your story as far as like uh, college and everything. Right, right. Yeah, I started sharing my story when it came to college. Mm -hmm. um, that's when I really started like heavily immersing myself mm -hmm. in social media and mm -hmm. entrepreneurship as a whole. Mm -hmm. um, I had actually been doing videography since I was in uh, high school. Okay. So I started off doing film. I was doing, like, the news and stuff, you know. Mm -hmm. I don't know if you guys had that at, at your school. but Yeah, we, yeah, yeah, I'd be, yeah, I'd be helping them out with the news. And mm -hmm. um, I had always been, like, had entrepreneurial spirit. Mm -hmm. um, but it was something that just wasn't really cared for in my household because mm -hmm. everyone else was just like always had a scarcity mindset correct and so anytime i was like yo i want to try this it was just shot down immediately so mm -hmm. you know obviously it caused like a like a large amount of self-doubt mm -hmm. within me um sure. and you know eventually i just like stopped uh right when i graduated high school I, I got a job at target my mom had been working there for like almost 20 years and mm -hmm. so she just put me onto a job and i was working there for a minute and uh luckily you know I, I hate to say the word luckily, but mm -hmm. <laughs> unfortunately, this is the this is what needed to happen for me to stop working there. But mm -hmm. it was, um, you know, in 20, 2019, 2020, mm -hmm. all the riots and things were going on. Yeah. Um, the, my my target actually got burned down. Oh. Yeah. In, in that city. was in Atlanta? Like, yeah, okay, in Atlanta. Okay. Yeah, it actually ended okay, up getting yeah. burned down. <laughs> and, um, you know, they called me up. They were like, look, you can either come back to work or... Uh, like and work at another store, mm -hmm. or you could just quit. I was like, all right, I'm I'm gonna quit. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> and that's I was like, the best option, right? <laughs> yeah, I'm like, all right, I'm gonna quit. And um, you know, before then, I was already doing digital marketing, mm -hmm. looking to build my brand. But that's when I really decided to like fully immerse myself. Um, and obviously, I had another another mm -hmm. epiphany moment too. Before then, but it didn't lead me to quitting. Mm -hmm. Um, so I felt like the the initial epiphany moment I had. Mm -hmm. Is when I was just trying to make money and I was going around just, um, I was smoking, doing things I wasn't supposed to be doing, and I was passing on uh, drugs to my friends. And it, it, le it led me to be in a situation where I almost lost my life. Mm -hmm. And they, still, that wasn't enough for me to like yeah. fully immerse myself. <laughs> it, like my, my whole job <laughs> had to get burned down. Yeah. And um, that's when I really realized it's like, okay, this is what I want to do. Mm -hmm. And I, I started to go all in on, on my business and, mm -hmm. and myself. So. Hey, well, I definitely want to say I commend you for that. I'm glad you said, um, like you said, you at first you didn't want to say luckily, but it was more like unfortunate, but at the same time, it's fortunate because all these things played a part. And mm -hmm. that's exactly what I said again. We're here to talk about evolving through experience. So even if it may seem like it's a negative experience or a negative situation, you find the light in it to pretty much bring that out and you highlight that and you see how it's made you grow. So before you got to, so the situation where you almost got your life taken away and thankfully you're here, mm -hmm. um, first and foremost that was before the target got burned down then yeah. the target got burned down that was like all right now i need to stop playing yeah <laughs> okay now i need to stop Thanks. playing Thanks. okay and that situation happened in college yeah you were still in college. college yeah okay I, I just got out of college last year so mm -hmm. I, you, 
I'm sorry. Go ahead. Yeah. No. Oh, ahead. you graduated? Yeah. You, okay. Yeah. You graduated. I, yeah, I stuck through the whole four years. Mm-hmm. And I, I ended up graduating. Um, I didn't graduate with both of my degrees, like, mm-hmm. up until the point where I quit my job. Well, mm-hmm. really, the last year of college, I had a double major with uh, biology and psychology. Okay. Um, The last year, I was, like, going all in on my business, and I started seeing, like, a lot of money coming in. Mm-hmm. And I was just like, look... I really thought to drop out, but yeah. I'm like, okay, I only got one more year left. Yeah. I'm just going to drop one of my degrees, though, like not make mm-hmm. it super hard on myself. Correct. Um, So I just dropped a bio degree and then finished with my, my psychology degree and, and my minor in statistics. So. Bet. I want to say thank you because you finished for the for the rest of us that didn't because I had one year <laughs> left and I just said, I'm not doing this no more. <laughs> and, that, and that was like right when COVID happened. So it was just like COVID happened. It's like. It, like that's when, like I said, I know a few people say the same thing. Like that's when I made the mo- a lot of bread during COVID. And it's right. like I seen like, hey, now nah, I'm not take this full force. So it was just like, ain't no point in going back. Um, so I definitely just want to say thank you for that. Um, I want to go back, like you said, growing up with the scarcity mindset because I know a lot of kids and, and children, whatever, at any age, teens or whatever, mm-hmm. that is something that could obviously affect them. Obviously, you didn't let it affect you for the greater in a sense because obviously it affected you maybe for a small amount of time mm-hmm. but obviously you was able to outgrow that so what could you say for somebody that's in that at that age that you were at when that first happened like how to figure it out and stick through it to let them know like don't let your dreams die because your family doesn't understand it and it's no fault to them but at mm-hmm. the same time it is a fault to them because they're not expanding their mind but what could you give to a young um teen that age like I had to realize that a lot of my family lacked exposure, mm. you know. So my thing when I got to college, well, I wanted to go to college and move out the house as soon as possible because I wanted to be exposed to more things. Mm-hmm. Once I started to be exposed to more things, I realized that that's not how life is supposed to be. So, you know, um, ironically, we can always say that it's kind of our parents' fault for not exposing themselves, but there's some things that they, they just don't know is out there. Mm-hmm. Um, and so I never blame my parents for anything. I think that they did everything that they could, everything in their power. And it was everything in my power to make sure that I, you know, I'm young, make sure that I always live by two two rules when I was when I was growing up. And it's kind of crazy. I was like, never get fat, never get pregnant. <laughs> I said, never get fat, never get pregnant. <laughs> That's the two rules. Yeah, it's like, hey, life. <laughs> yeah, it's like, yeah. all right, just don't do this because this is these are things that are going to restrict me from mm-hmm. living the life I want to live <laughs> in my current moment, yeah. you know. And so I, I always would like that. That would be something I lived in the back of my mind. <laughs> But it's also something that my mom would always like tell me, yeah. you know, because she had it. She had my brother when she was uh, 15, 16, mm-hmm. and then she had me when she was 21. And I was like, I'm not doing that. Mm-hmm. Like, like, I, I just I would never do that. Yeah. <laughs> and there's nothing wrong with it. Yeah. Um, it's just something that I know was going to restrict me from exploring and mm-hmm. seeing what's going on in different countries and um, expanding my mind. And that's really what allowed me to shift my mindset from mm-hmm. like a scarcity mindset, because you kind of realize that it's possible. Mm-hmm. When you start seeing other people being able to achieve these things at such a young age, and you start right. seeing other like other people really living a life that you could only dream of living, I'm like I just had to get exposed to more yeah. things. So I would recommend if you feel like your family doesn't like they have a scarcity mindset, they don't really believe in your dream. It's like really the biggest problem is that they just lack exposure, and so mm-hmm. do you. And so you just have to get out there and expose yourself to more things. Like go to Linux and see a whole bunch of people that look like you hopping in the, your mm-hmm. dream car. Mm-hmm. That's some that's some exposure. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> go to different areas. Move, move, move out your home city. Mm-hmm. Yeah, get get out of there. <laughs> nah, get fact. exposed to different things, and that's really what I recommend. No, nah, I appreciate that. Cause I, I think people need to know that because um, you know sometimes it could be. I, I like to say sometimes it could be easier said than done, but I'm actually shifting that where it's it's actually done easier than said because I think like you said, just doing it. I know it may sound pretty much. Just like and this may sound easy, but like you said, to get the exposure is going to be the most vital thing. So let me ask you this. Obviously, we know your whole life is um, an example of evolving through experience, which we'll go into more. But in your own words, what does evolving through experience mean to you? Um, evolving through experience, it means that like you learn through your past mistakes and mm-hmm. lessons rather than allowing those things to hinder you, mm-hmm. you. You then utilize those experiences to create a better future. Um, and so I always make sure that anything that happens in, like today, mm-hmm. I don't bring it into tomorrow. Mm-hmm. So a lot of people struggle because they continue, they continuously bring in the past pain, mm-hmm. the past mistakes into the next day. And right. then now they live in that and they never right. evolve and become that new person, that new being that they need to become in order to get to that next level in life. So I always say like, 
look, if you are looking to really get to the next level, you need to become a new person. You need mm-hmm. to become a new level version up. of yourself. <laughs> yeah, you have to literally level up. Exactly. And yeah, that's really why I like mm-hmm. ran it myself that way because I, I have to instill that within myself mm-hmm. to make sure that I remember that, look, if I want to become a new, if I want to be where I want to be, I have mm-hmm. to change who I am. Correct. And so internally and out Mm -hmm. so with that did you would you say you always had that type of mindset or like when did that shift to that where you like you really fully digested that i think i'm still digesting what it Mm -hmm. means you know like transparency yeah i think i'm I'm still trying i'm still trying to like understand who i am as a person Mm -hmm. and i think that like we we especially online we Mm -hmm. have a brand we kind of people believe we have it figured out because Mm -hmm. we're pushing one yeah. thing I'm gonna do is just keep pushing. Facts. Yeah, I'm, I'm never gonna not push, even mm-hmm. if I don't really know exactly what exactly I want to do or mm-hmm. where I want to be. It's like I know, I know, like I have goals, mm-hmm. like I have a lot of goals, but it's still like I'm still trying to figure myself out, and I think a lot of people are, and I think that's yeah. okay. Agree. Yeah. No, and I, I say I appreciate the transparency because I, I definitely can relate 100 percent on that. Just growing, and that's exactly why, again, like evolving i never said evolve through experience like it's evolving because it's a continuous process you can evolve tomorrow today but again you may need to evolve again tomorrow like it's a continuous process so it doesn't stop and it's even though that may sound like oh you could never be satisfied the truth is you got to always grow because like if we're not growing then what are we honestly doing here still if it's no more to learn no more to do it's like kind of pointless to be here if you ask me um and i don't say that in a way of like if somebody feels that way that they shouldn't be here, but just in the sense of like from that mentality, like we got to continue to grow. And also I want to say why I love Level Up just in particular. The first time I heard Level Up um, is because, not the first time I heard the word, but um, just my favorite artist, you know, get, just guess who my favorite artist is if you had to guess, music wise. I couldn't. You couldn't guess? All right, Fab, right? So Fabulous is my favorite artist. <laughs> I know Chris jokes about me, jokes on that all the time. But um, he actually had a song about just leveling up. And I heard it at a young age. And it's like, obviously changing your mindset. Leveling up obviously means could mean a lot of different things. But growth in every aspect, that's just how I looked at it, the way he was explaining it. So I could relate to that of understanding, like, I may feel like I'm in a low place today, whether that's financially, mentally, spiritually, doesn't matter. But just understanding I got the opportunity to level up. And it's like you said, exposure. So seeing somebody else do what you want to do and seeing them come from where you come from, that's the thing that's going to pretty much inspire you to level up. So I just want to say that because that's actually like why I love the word level up so much. And obviously leveling up still goes hand in hand with evolving through experience. Like it goes hand in hand. So um, I also want to ask you, who's your favorite artist if you have one? If you had to pick, yeah, uh, I I really like vibey music. Okay, yeah. So people joke about me about this, but um, this is person. That, it's like they're not really an artist. Their mm-hmm. name's Shiloh Dynasty, and they make like like they don't even make music for real. They're actually mm-hmm. very low key. Word. Yeah. <laughs> so like, so if it's not music, like, what is it exactly? Like, it's not. Is they not putting words? Yeah, or I mean, it's it? kind of words. So mm-hmm. okay, are you familiar with like X, like X X X Tentacion? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah. so like one of his favorite or one of his most like like his biggest songs is mm-hmm. named uh, Jocelyn Flores. Okay. So a lot of people utilize Shiloh Dynasty's music mm-hmm. uh, to sample, sample and utilize for beats. Okay. Um, but I really like their music. So, okay. Um, that's typically what I listen to like mm-hmm. when I'm working. Um, mm-hmm. or you know at all. Mm-hmm. So that's what I listen to. It helps you be productive. Yeah, it's just yeah. it's just a vibe. Like, uh, yeah, I just yeah, it's a vibe. Like I listen to like rap music and stuff mm-hmm. too, but like not that if much. I, no, I listen to it a lot. Oh, yeah, okay, yeah. Okay, I listen, okay. I I'm not gonna cap. Much. Like I yeah. listen to it. every time I get in a car, I'm probably <laughs> listening to some rap music. You okay, me that. Yeah. So if you had to pick a rap artist, and I, I actually want to check out who you was just talking about that artist or what? Mm-hmm. I know you said they don't do music, but I would like to check it out. But as far as rap music wise, who do you listen to? Obviously, I know it's gonna be something productive though. Nah. Nah, I, I don't listen to all, like, I, I just want to get that out. Like, I'm not always going to be listening to, like, your uh, meditation or mm-hmm. your productive motivational speeches. Uh, well, when I say productive, <laughs> I think Lil Baby's productive. Lil so, Baby's productive? I, I think so. Someone just put me on a money man. Like, uh-huh. I was, like, I had heard of money man. I was watching mm-hmm. him. But they are like, you got to listen to money man. Mm-hmm. He be talking about all the credit stuff. Yeah. And I'm like, bro. Yeah, I listen to him. I'm like, he is talking about the criticism, but I just don't vibe. Yeah, you feel me? Makes sense. Yeah, I just don't vibe. But I, I'm a, I'm a, I download the album because I'm like, okay, okay. yeah, I say he, <laughs> I got he's you. talking about, he's talking yeah. about it. But I prefer to just like listen to music that like 
if, if I had to pull up my <laughs> playlist, it's probably like Drake in there. It's probably like okay. you know Rilo. Uh, I, I don't really. I, I listen to mainstream rap right. music. No, that's valid though, because I yeah. think like when I said baby's productive, and I think Drake is productive. I like when I say productive, I don't think it has to be always like you said motivational mm -hmm. something. It could just be productive where it helps you relax. Product relaxing is productive when you do it when you need to. Right. So that's why I asked that. Um, I want to just transition back a little bit. So I know you said you was obviously like when you was in uh school. I know you posted this on your page too mm -hmm. and your highlights as far as like constantly drinking and, and smoking, just trying to figure things out. Obviously, we're still growing and you're still trying to figure things out. What would you say is the reason you was doing it a lot more then? What would you say, like, just from that, from a mental, spiritual standpoint, what would you say you was, the reason you was doing it a lot more then? Mm. I Well, I started smoking in high school. Okay. Um, I, hadn't, I didn't drink anything until I got to college, but mm -hmm. I started to indulge into that in high school. And... Um, I went through like the end of high school was like a really tough time for me. Mm -hmm. Like it was, it was really weird. I I had gotten out of a relationship that it was like I was in there for pretty much the entire high school. Okay. I don't yeah, know yeah. why. Yeah, yeah. I, <laughs> like if you're in high school, do not do that. Like that was that was literally the craziest thing I could have done. Yeah. But you know that really put me into a place a bad place mentally because mm -hmm. the end of that relationship actually cost me not only the relationship but also all my friends. Mm -hmm. So by the time I'm graduating high school, I didn't really have any any friends around mm -hmm. me. So. I, I got to college and I was just kind of like in a in a scenario where I was just I just felt Lonely. alone, yeah. Mm -hmm. um, but I was an RA and I had friends actually. Mm -hmm. But you just feel alone, yeah. even when you have friends, you can still feel alone. And so I was just kind of in my dorm room. I had a whole bunch of things to do. I would I would always do my homework. Like I would mm -hmm. do my work. I would study. I would still do my duties as an RA. But I would just like I would just yeah. sleep and yeah. like smoke and sleep. Yeah. And I was just smoking and sleeping and doing my work and. Fortunately, I'm that kind of kid that can mm -hmm. just do work and yeah. pass. Yeah. <laughs> like even if I like just kind of hardly BS say, it. yeah, yeah I'm gonna yeah, still pass it. Like, um, but yeah, that's honestly that's what happened. Okay. And it it what it wasn't getting me off of track on life too much. Like, I wasn't one of those people who overindulged in mm -hmm. anything. Like. Like, if I had to look back on it, I had friends that did it way more than me. Mm -hmm. So I was comparing it to the wrong people, obviously. Yeah. Because I'm like, okay, you know, I'm not doing it as much as them. Yeah, that's justifying it. Yeah, I was like, I'm not doing it as much as them. I'm good. Do you yeah, know facts. But, but um, you know, I, I just stopped doing it completely. And then I actually got into another relationship where, you know, they they uh, they actually like to smoke a lot. And that's kind of how we we bonded. And um, midway through that relationship, I was just like, yeah, I'm, I'm good. Yeah. Yeah. Um, on, on smoking mm -hmm. i'm like i don't care what you do but i'm just not gonna do it mm -hmm. and you know i just i stopped what was the mental point you got to to just be like cold turkey I, i'm just not doing this no more like what got you there or what was the situation if any um true i say that <laughs> man the what got me there is that I don't I don't know yeah. I honestly couldn't tell you I uh, had I had tried shrooms for the first time mm -hmm. so I was thinking about whether or not I wanted to say this on this podcast yeah hey look yeah whatever I was thinking of whether with. or not I wanted to say it on this podcast <laughs> nah, whatever you comfortable with um but I quite frankly don't care too much mm -hmm. but I had tried it in um, college and for me the experience was uh, really enlightening mm -hmm. um it allowed me to kind of see where how i really felt like mm -hmm. internally yeah um it it, it, it automatically exposes yeah. that mm -hmm. um and the first time that ever happened there was actually a bad situation that happened at home like with my mom and, yeah. and she was calling me like stressing yeah. me out and i realized how heightened my emotions yeah. were in that state and i was like i don't need that yeah i, I don't need to be feeling like that, that ever, even yeah. when I'm not on mm -hmm. rooms, I first of all I started to distance myself from mm -hmm. a lot of the drama, mm -hmm. um, and so having like those experiences on those trips made me realize like actually I can learn how to become more emotionally intelligent. Mm -hmm. The taking the actual shroom allowed me to be more self-aware mm -hmm. and uh, I was already studying emotional intelligence because like mm -hmm. I said I was going to school psychology, for psychology. Yep. But I would I would really study it outside mm -hmm. of class. Like I would read other books and study and learn myself and things like that. And um, I I started to become more emotionally aware. And then I was doing sales, and you have to be Correct. extremely emotionally intelligent to do that as well. And 
yeah, I just realized, look, if I can just master this, then I don't like drugs. I don't really need it yeah. at all. Yeah. Yeah. And that's just kind of how. Well, no, I appreciate that transparency. Honestly, um, I, that, that says a lot. And I, I appreciate that. And I just want to double back on a few things you said. One, psychology. I was actually minoring in that. Um, mm -hmm. And I definitely see the value in it. Obviously, I didn't finish um, school, but I definitely see the value in it. And I see how, obviously, how it played a role. Um, and I, I thought about actually majoring in it. And I did really well in that class, truth be told, because that was like something I was passionate about, mm -hmm. especially this is at the same time I even had this. And I started off just talking about mental health, but evolving is so much more than mental. But to double back, um, I want to say, I want to say this about shrooms. One, I do know... Um, it's actually, I actually heard it's actually a lot of great benefits with it um, and when done correctly. Um, I know Dr. Sabi was talking about it and his his um, his sons and family, they actually talked about that as well. Um, on how, like you said, it heightens your emotions. Obviously, in that sense of the situation you had, it wasn't the most positive, but mm -hmm. I have heard it actually has really good medical benefits to it at the same time. Um, and I wanted to say, again, I say I thank you for, for sharing that. Um, just because the transparency, but I want to double back. So what could you say to somebody that's in that state or was in that state of, like you said, you felt lonely, you was trying to just figure out, like that was your outlet pretty much. What would you say to somebody that's in that situation that feels lonely? How do you feel like they could get out of that? Because there's so many people out in the world right now that may have a lot of friends, may on the social media or, or in person, may seem like they got it all together and they're super happy, but inside when they go home alone they're truly lonely inside from a mental and spiritual standpoint so what could you say to them that may be overindulging in, in these drugs or different things that are in drinks that's pretty much trying to help them escape it but obviously it's really just bringing them even closer to it right yeah i like i said it's like becoming more self-aware mm -hmm. it's like the best thing that you can do it's like mm -hmm. Really, why? Like, I had to figure out why do I feel so lonely? Like, mm -hmm. why do I feel this way? I have friends. Like, mm -hmm. um, like what is what is it? You know, becoming more self aware and studying yourself mm -hmm. and uh, documenting the process. It's like I tell people to go back and document their entire story from mm -hmm. from the time they were born until now. Like, and then rate those years on as far as like, was this a really positive year for you, or or was this a year where you feel like? you might have lost yourself a little bit and you kind of lack understanding within within yourself because you need to go back and heal. Mm -hmm. The thing is, is you probably feel alone because you have a lot of past traumas that you haven't healed from. And now you're kind of trying to figure it all out and then you're still busy. You got class, you got work, you mm -hmm. you know, you got your business, you're trying to start yeah. and do all these things at one time and then you're actually neglecting how you really feel inside. Mm -hmm. And so we really kind of let the how like our mental health get away from us mm -hmm. because we're so focused on the grind and mm -hmm. and so i tell people to be intentional about focusing on your mental mental health and how you feel because no matter how much money you make yeah it's it doesn't matter right. it doesn't matter if you're not happy and if you feel unfulfilled and mm -hmm. you feel lonely and you feel like you have to indulge in the things that aren't good for you right. um even even if it's not drugs like mm -hmm. sometimes you're indulging in people that aren't good for you mm -hmm. Sometimes it's, uh, you know, video games. Sometimes it's, like, eating too much. You feel me? Um, and so if you feel like you are lonely, then that's really an internal issue that won't be solved by any external force, in my opinion. Mm -hmm. It's something that you need to really look within yourself and figure out what it is that's making you feel that way. No, that that's a fact. You couldn't have said it better what have you ever thought about like have you ever done therapy because I, I know you was in psychology so mm -hmm. have you ever been to therapy yeah i've, okay. I've recently yeah i've recently like mm -hmm. um started going to therapy actually okay and if you don't mind sharing like how has that actually helped you even more because obviously you was already doing the internal work as we spoke about so how has therapy helped you even more uh it allowed me to get that that little small win that like, you know you we probably read Atomic Habits mm -hmm. and like getting that little small win of like committing to working on yourself. Mm -hmm. is like the biggest thing for me. It's like, they can tell me to do whatever, you know, mm -hmm. cool. But it's like, I know that I committed to working on myself by even coming to you. Mm -hmm. And so for a lot of people, that's like that one thing that they need in order to know that I'm trying to mm -hmm. become a better person. I'm trying to kind of figure, figure myself out. I'm trying to heal. Mm -hmm. um, it's just having that little small win by committing and then that's just going to be a snowball into you doing other positive things that are going to allow you to grow and evolve. So, mm -hmm. 
Okay, no, I appreciate that. Um, I, I ask that because um, obviously outside of you saying you was um, in school for psychology, um, I thought about like wanting to be in like the therapy situation in the sense of being a therapist. I actually been going to therapy for a while. Actually, I stopped now just because just been getting busy with a lot of different things over the last year or so. Mm-hmm. Um, but for the most part, like I'm a huge advocate for therapy, and I think more people need to embrace that from all from all hues of life, no matter who you are. Because like you said, it's like you said, taking that one small step, it shows that you're you're trying. Whether whether somebody may feel like it's a small win, a big win, is at the end of the day, as long as you know you're trying and like you said, you have to go home at the end of the day and actually put that effort towards you can go to therapy all day, but if you're not taking any of the advice, it really doesn't matter at that point. Right. Yeah, like um I used to play basketball growing mm-hmm. up and, and my coach would always say like like real players are made on an off season, mm-hmm. and and that's really how life works. Is that you can take any course if you don't if you don't do that homework out by yourself, mm-hmm. you don't actually put the work in, then you won't right. be successful. You can get a therapist if you're not doing that work on the off season, you won't be successful. So the thing is, is that at times people tend to project their failures because they aren't putting their own work in, and they aren't holding themselves accountable, and they aren't being intentional about reaching their goals. Right. Um, and that's really what's important is that you can take that small step by making that commitment by going to therapy. But what's really important is that that small step is supposed to allow you to become more intentional about working on yourself. Fact. So. No, fact. Well, who is somebody that you could say played? I ain't gonna say obviously a lot of people play a role in helping you pretty much grow. I'm not saying they get all the credit, but what is one person you can say like that truly inspired you or helped you pretty much get to where you are today? Yeah, I definitely got a few people. Um, yeah. but I would say for sure my mom. Mm-hmm. Um, my mom's always she she's been working on herself, mm-hmm. you know, to so see her like go from where we, she was when we were like growing up to where mm-hmm. she is now. I'm like I'm very proud of her. Yeah, and it like inspires me to be better and work mm-hmm. on myself as well. Yeah. Um, but like when it comes to the business side of things, mm-hmm. cause it's a whole nother thing. My mom can't help me out with like understanding sure, how to manage my business and then also being a person. Mm-hmm. Like it's like being an entrepreneur and still managing being a, a, a human being. Mm-hmm. Like yesterday I just like went through a crazy experience. Like I'll literally be up working all day and then sometimes I forget to eat. Mm-hmm. I didn't eat anything. And I had like an Arnold Palmer and it literally made me sick. I started mm-hmm. getting a migraine. I started to like throw up. It was mm. crazy, and um, I had to. I had a friend, a friend. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I'm like, look, I need help. I was, I was, I was shivering. It was going crazy, yeah. but I'm like, dang, like I'm really forgetting to take care of myself yeah. when I'm, I'm so immersed into this. And so, right. like a few people that have been helping me as far as like balancing that, like definitely would be like a uh, cool nerd, coolest nerd ever. Oh yeah, 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 he's been like one of my mentors throughout this entire time. Mm. Um, Maddie J, okay. for sure. Um, like obviously Javi, uh, me and Javi are in the best best spot right now. Mm-hmm. But um, we've been working together since we've been little kids. Yeah, and then uh, yeah, a, a few other people. Honestly, I'm mean, gonna have this one mentor that is like off grid. Mm-hmm. Her name's Toya. She's like goat, but she always kind of brings me back mm-hmm. to reality and uh, re- helps me remain like level headed. Yeah, you feel me? And so it's like a whole bunch of people that. I always go to when it comes to like little things like yeah. you gotta you got things that um you'll go to for specific people. Correct. Yeah. And so mm-hmm. like <laughs> those are pretty much yeah. like the people that like are on my roster of like look like, if I need help, I know that they'll be there. Correct. Yeah. Now shout out to all of them and I, I think that's vital. Um and, and one of the re- other, another reason I asked that because obviously we know we need people in our circle and people need to know no matter where you get at in life or as you're continuing to prevail, you need to have people around you. I know obviously before you said you felt lonely in, in college, but obviously now you're in a different space where you evolved. And, mm-hmm. and truth be told, that may mean you evolved out of certain people's life. Like we just said, sometimes we overindulge in certain people. Right. Um, and at some point that just has goes no shame towards them or any diss towards them. It's just like life requires separation. Mm-hmm. As you evolve, it requires separation. and Everybody can't come with you. So I'm glad you said that. Um, I want to just go into that. Um, well, with that, I wanted to say people, I think, how, how do I put this? Outside of just knowing we need people in our lives. Um, and like you said, I know you said you shout out to all of them. It was a few of them that you mm-hmm. said. And I'm sure it's even more. Um, what can you say? Because I know you share a lot of gems on, obviously, social media, just as far as networking. So let's give us one now on finding those people, how, how to find and pinpoint those right people that you need in your corner. Um, so 
I think most times people struggle with doing this because mm-hmm. they don't understand what they even need. Mm. What do they? What do you need? Need help with? Mm-hmm. Um, and so, I that's why I, I always start with myself. It's mm-hmm. like, well, what do I even need help with? Because if you if you don't know what you need help with, then how are you going to be able to pinpoint the right person that can help you? Mm-hmm. Is that like sometimes we're some people are just waiting for someone to come save them mm-hmm. instead of just looking for a little bit of help, and so they're out here searching. And now you you looking a little bit too hungry. You look like you're starving mm-hmm. rather than coming with a proposition where you can provide value and, and the type of value you need back um, is something that you already identify that you need and you already mm-hmm. identify their needs as well. Mm-hmm. Because when you meet somebody, you know, most times people are thinking like, what's in it for them? Mm-hmm. And that's like going to be the average case, especially when it comes to entrepreneurship. Like you got a lot of sharks out here, mm-hmm. a lot of people who aren't really ha- going to have your best interests at mm-hmm. heart. And so it's just kind of like, okay, well, knowing that there's still some sort of collaborative efforts that can be had. What right. what can you do that can be in best in the best interest of them and the best interest of yourself as well to help mm-hmm. you guys both accelerate? And that's kind of how I look at things. It's like, okay, I know I can benefit this person by doing X, Y, Z. These are my values. Mm-hmm. Um, this is what value I can provide to them. And this is really what I need. And just kind of sitting down and having that conversation. And most time, if you're able to provide a substantial amount of value, that person would not be, he they would definitely be willing to do that back for you. So, mm. no, I appreciate that. I'm glad you said, like you said, some people don't even know what they need, and I, I think that was a, a vital point that you you said. Um, and honestly, I wasn't even thinking about it like that from that perspective until you said it, because I know I said that because I do know people people are like you said just going back to the lonely part because i felt like that at one point in my life Mm -hmm. um and that's why i could relate to it so much so i just wanted to see tie it all together and what helped you and then also what see if it related to how i was able to get out of that as well to some degree Mm -hmm. um no matter what age because i feel like you can feel lonely people can feel lonely at young ages old ages middle ages no matter where you are in life and like we also said it doesn't matter about how much money you got it's a matter are you fulfilled and fulfillment comes from within um my guy even stevie bag said it. he was like the most important words in the english language start with in i in so obviously internal pretty much invisible things like that um because it's all with within us um that makes us who we also need to be um and so with that being said i just want to say look i i want to i'm trying to figure out how to put this again because it's so much i know we could talk about so much right now um, but I'll come back to that. So as far as with some of your mentors, you said, um, like CEO, Maddie J, um, Cool Investors as yeah, well, right? Yeah, Coolest yeah, cool, Nerd. Cool, oh, Coolest Nerd. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Yeah. Coolest Nerd and CEO, Maddie J. What was some of the things that you've given them? Um, because obviously it's it's a it's a both, it goes both ways. Obviously, I know they helped you, but what are some of the things that you've been able to give them outside of like, obviously what you do as far as with the camera and everything? Mm-hmm just from an intangible standpoint. Yeah, yeah. Um, and the thing is, is I don't really do camera work. Oh. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh, hey, excuse yeah. me. Thank no, no. you for correcting me. Yeah, no, it's good. Mm-hmm. It's good. Because um, some people think that it's mm-hmm. like, I, you'll hardly ever catch me holding a camera. Mm-hmm. Um, I really do. I, I build social funnels. Okay. And so, like, what that looks like is helping people, obviously, get the awareness online. Mm-hmm. And I'm more like a consultant, okay. you know, if anything. A consultant as far as, like, okay, you know, those two people, they're marketers, okay? Mm-hmm. So they already know how to get the attention. Mm-hmm. And and I work with other influencers as well. Mm-hmm. So, like, YouTubers. A lot yeah. of YouTubers, are, are they have, like, almost a million subscribers. And mm-hmm. the only thing that they're getting paid from is AdSense. Mm-hmm. Um, and so I work as a brand operator. And what that means is that I'm helping these influencers better monetize their brand. If mm-hmm. that means building the system so that after that, after they get that attention we're converting that to dollars mm-hmm. um and working them up a value ladder as well building building that value ladder what does that look like that means i'm um, having some sort of free or low ticket offer a way to collect data mm-hmm. retarget those leads as well so then we can consistently make money on a continuity plan it's mm-hmm. like that's really what i work with on the, like on behind the scenes i, okay. I sit on my computer for like 12 to 16 hours a, a day. day yeah yeah like <laughs> building building mm-hmm. this um, for other influencers and obviously, you know, myself as well. Correct, yeah. So. Okay, no, I think I appreciate you clarifying that because that's what I assumed. So thank you for clarifying that. And I think um, that's important. I want to say this also, um, as far as, um, dang, I just lost my train of thought that quick, trying to say that. Um, dang, I just lost my train of thought that fast. <laughs> you said, hold on, I got to go back because you just said, 
as far as building for influence or influencers. So what is one thing you do? This is what I was going to say. What is one thing you do now when you find yourself, obviously you're not no more in a sense of where you were at mentally before, mm -hmm. but when you have those hard days outside of just going to um, your, your mentors or whatnot, people that you could call on, what is something you do um, just with yourself, whether that's solitude that helps you bring you back to like, look, I'm, I'm human. I need this. I need to take this time or whatever just to get my own mental and spiritual right. So what is one thing you do to do that? Uh, I just like to sit. Mm -hmm. I sit outside. Mm -hmm. Nature. Okay. Yeah. I like to sit like not really too much nature. I mean, okay. like on the patio. Okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah. I don't like to do too much. Um, uh, I like to sit outside. I like to, uh, I'll meditate. Mm -hmm. Um, I'll sleep. Yeah. Yeah. I don't get a lot of sleep. Like most people, they always, people always swipe up on my story. Like, mm -hmm. girl, you don't never sleep. Yeah. You don't never sleep. Mm -hmm. And I really don't like, and that's a problem. That's yeah. a big problem. Yeah. Yeah. You, that, I, yeah. Yeah, you need to sleep. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You need sleep. Um, and so if, if I'm really feeling down, I literally just sleep. Cause mm -hmm. I was like, yo, I, I get like four hours of sleep a day. Yeah. I'm I'm gonna, I'm gonna just sleep today. Yeah. <laughs> and I like being able to make those decisions, you mm -hmm. know? Um, that's one of the, you know, good things about being an entrepreneur and mm -hmm. like kind of having your free time, Correct. um, and being a little bit more flexible with your schedule mm -hmm. is that, you know, sometimes you're having a down day, like take a nap, bro. Yeah. Take a nap. Take a nap. <laughs> I'm not one of those people who's like, yo, you're feeling bad. Get to work. Get to work. Yeah. Nah. It's like, yo, you, you're allowed to feel bad. Fact. Yeah. You're allowed to feel bad. Mm -hmm. Feel bad. And then, but tomorrow get up. Fact. Like I said, leave that in today. Nah, so with that, have you ever, when did you transition that, or have you always felt like just, I'm just going to sleep, or at some point did you feel like you felt bad, let me just keep working, like, to pretty much use that as uh, a scapegoat, if that makes sense? Have you ever felt that way before? No, I mean, I don't, like, I, because even when I feel, I don't really have a lot of down days, Okay, you know? Um, I... I don't take too many things to heart. It's like, okay, mm -hmm. that was weird, but you got to, I'm going to yeah. go ahead and keep growing. Mm -hmm. um, but it's it's like when you have a lot of negative things happen back to back to back, mm -hmm. okay, eventually it's going to be a lot. You know, mm -hmm. you, you got to take a break away from work, Correct. away from the stressors, away, mm -hmm. away from those things. I don't feel bad for taking a break. You know, in mm -hmm. fact, when I was in high school, my mom used to have these things called mental health days. And mm -hmm. so um, when, when school was getting really hard for me and, I was, like, going through all that in school. She was like, all right, cool. You don't feel like going to school? You just have been mental health day. Mm -hmm. She just wouldn't make me go to school. Yeah. I would just stay at home. <laughs> and and like, I would just stay at home. And, and I was, like, a good student, so I'd yeah. always do my work. I would never be, mm -hmm. like, doing anything um, I wasn't supposed to be doing for the most part, you feel yeah. me? Yeah. Um, <laughs> um, Elaborate. Sorry, yeah. I got you. <laughs> for the most part, you feel me? <laughs> um, but, but, yeah, she would give me something called a mental health day, so mm -hmm. I kind of still utilize those practices. Makes and, sense. Yeah, it's like, you take a mental health day. Important. Take a break. That's it. No, that's vital. You feel like you're going to do that same thing when you have children? Yeah, yeah. Obviously. Because you see how it's beneficial for you. Yeah, having children. Like, remember my two rules. Mm -hmm. um, never get fat, never have kids. <laughs> um, <laughs> I guess that, that ain't going to apply at some point. <laughs> yeah, no, nah. Yeah. Um, I don't know. Because I really, it, up until actually like a month ago, I, mm -hmm. I really did not want to have any children ever. Mm -hmm. Um, a month ago, I had, <laughs> yeah, I, I had no... Oh, I want to know why. Go ahead. <laughs> oh, I just didn't want to have kids. I, I have, you know, five siblings. I'm mm -hmm. like, you guys have the kids. I already have a niece. Yeah. I'm, I'm a really great auntie. I'm actually mm -hmm. going to pick up my niece after this. Okay. Yeah, I'm a really great auntie. Yeah. I, I was okay with being the rich auntie. Yeah. So what made you change it? <laughs> what, what made you change? Like, like yeah, I'm going to have one now. I Like, not now, but just eventually. Okay, so I was, again, doing what I do. So I'm mm -hmm. helping this lady... Um, I'm helping this woman mm -hmm. monetize her, her brand. So she mm -hmm. she came to me. She's like, I want to start a podcast. I'm like, okay, well, let's understand what a podcast is, right? Mm -hmm. So for one, I see you have merch right here. Mm -hmm. This is things that people can purchase, right? Mm -hmm. well, number one the mistake that I think that people do is start a podcast and not have any way of monetizing it outside mm -hmm. of AdSense. Mm -hmm. Is that a, mon a podcast is a marketing, marketing tactic. Um, you need to have a way to monetize it. Before we have a way to monetize it, it's like, do you even have a brand identity? Mm -hmm. And so she came to me with that, and I'm like, okay, boom, I helped her establish her brand identity. When we help uh, people establish their brand identity, what we do is document their entire story. Like I said, all the way from when you were born mm -hmm. to now. It's mm -hmm. a two-hour interview. We'll mm -hmm. sit down and document everything you've been through. Mm -hmm. You might got to call your mama up for this one. You feel <laughs> me? Like, you might have forgot call something. Call your mama up. <laughs> but within yeah. this interview, she's, um, she's a little bit older, mm -hmm. but she had expressed to me how uh, she wish she would have had kids mm. and that 
no one ever really talks about being a, a 40 year old woman alone. Mm. You don't have any children and you don't have anybody to care for. Mm. You don't have this, that, and a third. And I was just kind of like, no one, no, no one does talk yeah. about that. No, I was like, you made me cry. I think yeah. about my son. <laughs> yeah, go ahead. Yeah, no, no one does. No one said like mm-hmm. no one talks about that. Yeah, and I was like, I really, and it's like I'm not afraid of being alone. Yeah, but it's just like to hear her perspective on yeah. that. It was like, well, maybe, maybe I should. Yeah. Like because it's like when you get there, you don't really have a choice. You can't really have any. Like mm-hmm. at this point, you have to adopt. Mm-hmm. You can't really have your own kid. And, yeah. And it's just kind of like that sucks as a woman, you know, right. as a dude, bro. Y'all mm-hmm. can have kids till y'all eighty. Mm-hmm. <laughs> it's like, yeah. and then I got a time bomb. Uh, it's yeah. like crazy. Um, about now you're kind of forced to have kids at a younger age. So mm-hmm. now women, they're literally forced to try to gain success or be reliant on a partner's success mm-hmm. because they have to have kids by a certain age, anyways. Mm-hmm. And so it's like, okay, you got to do this by a certain time. You got to make, you got to have a stable household by mm-hmm. a certain time. You better find a partner by a certain time mm-hmm. because if not. You actually won't have no kids. Yeah. No, I appreciate you sharing that because that, that has made me think more. Because I even said I don't want no more. I not I, I love my son to life at the end of the day because I could have a bad day or whatever, but I see him, he he, he ready to turn up, like smiling yeah. ear to ear, doing flips, always got something new to show me. Um, And I just like, I just don't want no more. Not because it was so hard with him, but it's just like, I'm trying to manage so much and then still be a very present father. Like I, I, like I said, I was up since six. So I had to drop him off, get him situated, and still get ready for everything today Um, just on a daily basis. So hearing that, I would definitely just want to say shout out to her, and I would definitely love to eventually hear her story. Obviously, when she gets everything started, mm-hmm. I would definitely love to hear more because I think that is a great perspective because I, I never thought about it from that perspective. We always hear it from don't have them early, don't have them early, right. don't have them early, don't have them too young. And at the end of the day, I don't think it's a perfect time to have children because right. once you have them, it's going to be a learning curve regardless, yeah. no matter where you are in life. And even with people that got way more money, I'm talking about millions st- stacked up, they still struggling with, with having yeah. children from the sense of trying to manage it all. So it don't even matter if you got the money or not. It's still going to be a learning curve. So like I said, I definitely love to hear her story because that's not a perspective I thought from. Mm-hmm. And I, I'm sure so many other women out there that may think like that and maybe that see the same way that not saying it deterred you from how you thought, but it just gave you a better perspective. Right. And I think that's vital. So I definitely would love to hear that. And I just want to say, you just definitely just gave like $100,000 worth of game easy. Because <laughs> I know this is your business. So you just pretty much gave that away to the crowd. <laughs> so if they pick up on it, they pick up on it. So now I just want to say, um, any last words? I definitely appreciate you coming on. I'm going to get your at names. But any last words? Yeah, man. Uh, y- Y'all just stay focused on self-development. Mm-hmm. Stay focused on self-development. Make sure that you are being intentional about growing and developing and becoming the best version of you because that's the only way you're able to get to the next level. So it doesn't matter about how much money you make. It does not matter about the people you're around. You could be around 100 millionaires. If, if you're not healed inside, internally, then what's going to end up happening is that you're not going to live a fulfilled life. The goal is to be living a fulfilled, happy life. So, y'all, I appreciate you for having me on here Y'all tap in with me. Level up Lissa on all platforms. Yeah, I will tag you at the bottom. Yeah. I appreciate having you on again. I'm glad um, we can have this conversation, like I said, just on growth in every aspect. And I appreciate you sharing some of the exclusives on here. Right. Might save those for the Patreon and cut those out. You know? nah. So you never know. But so I'll, do, yeah. I'll do this. I'll do this. If, if anybody wants like a complete guide, I'll give it away for free. For free. All you have to do is DM me the word evolve. Give me the word Evolve. I'm going to give you a complete guide on how you can monetize your brand online. So just DM me the word Evolve on IG. Love, love, listen. I appreciate that. That's love. <laughs> so if y'all loved another episode of Evolving Through Experience, make sure y'all check us out on all platforms at Evolving Through Experience. And like I said, if you're not growing, you're not evolving, today's a great day to start. Evolving is mental, spiritual, emotional, physical, and beyond. It does not stop. So continue just to level up your life. And evolve. It's the same thing. Whichever word you want to use, they go hand in hand. So make sure y'all check us out on another episode. Boom.